what a season it's been. The drama started before the campaign had even kicked off with Neymar sensationally leaving Barcelona for PSG. Not that it hurt the Blaugrana too much, they scooped the domestic double. Real Madrid made up for their woeful start by ending it all with a third straight Champions League. And in Napoli, love may be king. But in Calcio, it's Juventus who reigns supreme. Oh, and Pep's partying in the Premier League. Throughout the top five leagues, the quality has shone through, and that's what we're here to celebrate this evening. Welcome into the 2018 edition of the Locker Room Awards. He's back, the bomber himself, Christian Vieri. He's the head of the goalkeepers' union. He loves to stir the pot, and he definitely puts the bay in Bailey. <laughs> Ray Hudson describes a goal like no other and always manages to get a word in where even Iniesta would fail to find the space. <laughs> and Thomas Rongan, whose hot takes are often even braver than his bow ties, but he's still our favourite scout since To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, that's funny. Welcome in, welcome in. We begin tonight's show with the award for the best manager, where some have fallen this season, others have stood head and shoulders above the rest and led their side to success and silverware. The nominees for best manager are Pep Guardiola, Manchester City, Ernesto Valverde, FC Barcelona, Zinedine Zidane, Real Madrid, Diego Simeone, Atletico Madrid. They are your four nominees. Ray, Pep Guardiola, what did you make of his season? Uh, absolutely brilliant. Uh, in every shape, way and form. Uh, moonwalked to the title in England and showed the rest of English football, especially the team that finished in second place, <laughs> uh, Man United, just how football should be played. They were indomitable, they were uh, indefatigable, they were brilliant, radiant, uh, played with a style and a flair. And the best part of it was that he built on that first year, which wasn't so impressive. But with time came the brilliance of Guardiola, and it all come out in spellbinding football for Manchester City. By far the best team in England, by far the best manager in in England, for certain. In England. <laughs> but for you, Gary Bailey, there's one manager you've been supporting all season. I have, Valverde. I think he's done a fantastic job. When you consider when he took over, Neymar had just left. Mm. He brought Dembele and he was injured. They got hammered twice in the Super Cup by Real Madrid. And he settled everything down. He managed that team. They won the double, uh, which in itself is a fantastic achievement. They finished 17 points ahead of, of Real Madrid. So I, I think in terms of, of achievements, his has been an absolutely stunning achievement. And yet... The award, I think, will go to Zidane simply because he's won the third UCL in a row. But in terms of achievements in a year, Valverde, well done. Oh, he's a friend of yours, Zinedine Zidane Christian. I suppose you are going for him. Can we take the other three photos away? <laughs> <laughs> we don't need the other three coaches. Zidane won three Champions League in a row. In a row. No one does that. He's the best coach there is. He deserves this locker room... Uh, Award. award and yeah. many other Great awards best, manager. <laughs> best <laughs> manager best guy best everything he's a winner i don't know why we even why we even putting the other three there but just while you are on the subject what did you make of him giving up the role i spoke with uh, well i can't say who i spoke with <laughs> uh, <laughs> him. he decided i'm happy with, with what as long as he's happy i'm happy and his family as well had a big yeah. part of it go on so yeah. if they're happy well you know Whatever the decision they make, I'm okay with it. So Bobo says Zidane, but it's a man on the other side of Madrid you're going for. Absolutely. We, we take consistency for granted, all right? You guys ever heard of a duopoly? Hey, no. Duopoly? Oh, I it used too. to be Madrid and Barca. When he came mm -hmm. in five years ago, he made it a triple oli. Okay, so... <laughs> A team, a team. Are you speaking English? Or a a, no, a, 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 a team that spends one tenth of what your boy Zidane spends. Okay, on a transfer. And he spent nothing this and year. Has Twenty-two goals against this year. By the way, less than Barca. Yeah. The great defense with Ernesto yeah. Valverde. So Simeone, you gotta give him the due that he did. By the way, here you go. Here's your three hundred million for City, 
for and, and, Zidane and right far, here, guys. And I got did, nothing. How and I did, get the best out of my players. And how Simeone. far did Barcelona finish in front of Val in, 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 in Simeone. front of Simeone but and Zidane? 14 15 points. and 17 we points. We finished like ahead that. of Zidane. Thanks, Tommy. You're welcome. <laughs> so the winner is. Zinedine Zidane. No question. What, what are we talking about here, guys? I'm going to go home if we're going to start going <laughs> crazy. What are we talking Let's about? Thumbs up keep... or thumbs down? I'm going to give more money. Uh, I'll give more uh, money today. You've got to give Valverde credit for a double. Thumbs up, yeah. thumbs down. Yeah. Thumbs uh, up. Yeah, yeah, I'll go. Four thumbs I'll up. Go. Thumbs yeah, up over this side of the yeah. table. Okay, the next category is for best transfer. And this season offered up some eye-watering moves. From the shocking to the successful, we've managed to whittle it down to just four. The nominees for best transfer are Mohamed Salah, Liverpool, James Rodriguez, Bayern Munich, Neymar Jr., Paris Saint-Germain, Diego Costa, Atletico Madrid. Okay, guys, let's have a little talk about this then. Mo Salah, who seemingly found his perfect match at Liverpool. Yeah, yeah absolutely brilliant season. I think he almost single-handedly took them past Manchester City, took them past Roma, finished top of the EPL scoring charts, nearly beat Messi in the European scoring charts. And he only cost 40 million. So if you're looking at the best transfer, you have to look at, at what, what Mo Salah did versus what was paid for him. Neymar, they paid, they paid five times as much. Did Neymar deliver five times as much to PSG? Not in my opinion. This has been the best transfer by far in the season. You'd second that, Thomas? Yeah, I, I do. I agree with you as well. What he's done with Liverpool, in particular in UCL, and how he made players around him. I mean, Mane has, has also shined with Salah. Salah's got also double-digit assists. That's the reason why Firmino has done well. And that's what a great player does. He makes players better, and yep. then when you need to, he takes a team on his shoulders, and he takes them to the promised land. So Mo Salah, well done this year. This side of the table don't agree. Why? This guy, when he was 16, year old, 16 years old, Neymar, they were saying he was better than Pelé. What are we talking about, What guys? are we talking about? What are we talking This is Neymar. Yeah. He played yesterday after three months. He yeah. scored a goal. And what a goal it was with, with Brazil. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Sa Salah, it's his first year he's been scoring. He's been it's scoring for five years. He's this one of the best players in the world. This is his season, though. Yeah, it's a great transfer as well, yeah. uh, Neymar. He will bring, and he keeps on bringing big boxes of toys to PSG. The, he, he could win the World Cup, we hope so. But, uh, no, Salah has been the, 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 the golden boy. For 40 million, he looks cheap. But Neymar will probably go on for... Four, five times as much in his next transfer. So Neymar, yeah, they got this, is, this is this season. This season, yes. Neymar's been injured most of it. Hasn't achieved that much compared to Salah. So mm. go on, Kay. But it was the most stunning move of the summer. That said, the winner is. Hey! 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 Okay, thumbs down. Pele, easy Pele. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah. Got to be no, no fair enough. Yeah. Clean sweep. Clean sweep. Clean sweep. sweep. Fair enough. Clean sweep. Now, our next award celebrates the future of football every week on the Extra. Gabriela Mardo brings us Born on Being, showcasing the stars who make their names and start their journeys on this very network. The award for top Born on Being star goes to Sergei Milinkovic Savic. The Born on Being class of 2017-18 has been perhaps our most competitive to date. But nobody has had the season Lazio's 23-year-old midfielder has had. 14 goals and 9 assists to his name, the 6'4 Spanish-born Serbian commanded the Bianco Celeste's midfield. He is, according to Transfer Market, Lazio's most valuable player, Serbia's most valuable player, and the third most valuable in all of Serie A. His agent, ex-Chelsea striker Mate Kejman, who has said his client has better qualities than Paul Pogba, will have a very busy summer negotiating with the world's top clubs. As scouts from all over Europe stopped by the Stadio Olimpico this season to watch our 2017-18 top Born on Bean star. And the winner of the Social Media Awards is the man who makes Mondays better, the man who has way more likes and appearances this season. It's Patrice Evra. Well done to him. He is an absolute star on Instagram, Twitter and beyond. We find out who the best goalkeeper of the season was among the top five leagues and will the best defender talk promote a few challenges and tackles among the panellists? Find out when the Locker Room Awards returns.
for the goalkeeper can be a lonely existence and when the gloved gods are called into action it's usually because someone's kicking something right at them yes only the brave and the <coughs> mad <laughs> would choose such a role our next yeah. award celebrates the best netminder of the last 12 months the nominees for best goalkeeper mark andre ter Stegen, fc barcelona Kaylor navas real madrid jan oblak atletico madrid alison becker A.S. Roma. Thomas has opted for Ter Stegen. The two best players this year in Barca's team were Messi and Ter Stegen. Ter Stegen single-handedly won quite a few games for this, this team. Two losses, one in La Liga. Obviously, the Roma one hurts because it put him out of the UCL. Uh, but, but he's been just so consistent over, over time. He's like the Iniesta with gloves, and he's revolutionized <laughs> the position even more. Last year, by the way, you're laughing, last mm. year had more dribbles than Ronaldo. No. His pass accuracy, <laughs> by the way, his, pa hey, hey, his pass accuracy is 98%, okay? That is very good. I would put my house on Ray Hudson going for the Real Madrid shot stopper. We all know it. I've been his biggest fan ever since he arrived at Real Madrid from Levante. Um, uh, the perfect goalkeeper for Real Madrid and replacing uh, St. Iga Casillas. Uh, he produces the same types of saves. Uh, with each year, the pressure has mounted on him and he's wore that pressure like a Cartier diamond. Um, he's been uh, uh, keeping this Real Madrid team in games with pulling off saves that were just stupefyingly magnificent. He did it again year in, year out. They didn't win the league, but it was nothing to do with Kayla. Kayla dragged this team as much as anybody on that side. I'm talking about your Cristiano Ronaldo's and your Sergio Ramos's and your Marcelo's. It was the Costa Rican who everybody loves to slap around, and I will take him any day of the week over anybody. Yet the winner of the Zamora Trophy in La Liga this season was Jan Oblak, mm. Gary. It was, and he conceded half the number of Kayla. And I love Kayla as a goalkeeper. I think he's a wonderful reflex keeper. But if you're looking at goalkeepers to not concede goals, to be big, to be strong, and to organize their defense, well, I think Oblak is way and above good the best. Good defense in front of uh, him, though. Well, I'm going to say, but not as good a team. I mean, Ter Stegen's got a much better team in front of him. In front of Kayla, it's still the European Champions League for the third year running. And yet, at Atleti, there's nobody up front. That, so all the pressure falls on that back four, and Oblak has to organize them. I think he's a wonderful goalkeeper. For me, sure. he's the best. But once again, I don't think he's going to win it. Okay, yeah, bringing delight to the position. Over in the Serie A has been Alisson Christian. They call him the wall from Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that? No, I, I did not. Sure. I, just, I just made it up now. Uh, <laughs> 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 he could probably play at any position on the pitch with his fancy footwork. Listen, he's got good feet work. He's good in the, in the between the posts. Yeah. Took Rome to the semi-finals of the Champions League. What else came out? Third in the league. Fantastic goalkeeper. I think he's going to go away this year. So, I don't know. I think he's going to win. Let's okay. see what happens. Well, shall we find out who is going to win? Because all of you have different choices here. With 46% of the vote from you, the viewers, it's Mark Andre. Hey, TR. Hey. Huh? Hello, guys. Very good. Very Hello, good. guys. And I thought it would be Kayla. Yeah, on A. Yeah, on A. Uh, yeah, no, I'll go with it. I yeah. mean, he's had a you fantastic What do you mean? You're shake your head, of course. Not, not for me. Not happy. Nope. Because you, okay. your beloved Kayla didn't get it. Stegen. When Nava still he dies. Ter Stegen, your best keeper, but who made the save of the season? We picked these blistering blocks out and our viewers voted. Here are our top of the stops. Go on, go on, Ray. It's your beloved Nava. I mean, look at this. It, 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 it reflexes everything. It, this one's a simple type of strike as well, but he deals with everything so incredibly well. Hey, just saying it only needs one save. That's it. Boom. Thanks for coming. I don't have to get up quick. Come on, Next Christian. This, this is a save, guys. Uh -huh. Oh, this is a good save. Donnarumma. Wow, look at that. That's a 90th minute, save. three meters from the fantastic. Thumb. But Christian, here comes Top the class. winner. Coming up now, I hope, as we lead Donnarumma. This is the one. This is an unbelievable save, which he could never do again, Silicon. How do you keep that ball out there? With your right hand and the ball goes out on your left hand wow. side. That's stunning. Wow. Stunning, stunning, stunning. All right. So listen, it is. Come I on. have the winner Come in on, this Kate. envelope. Come on, Kayla. You have all voted at home and you picked Ter Stegen what? against Valencia. Hello. Two for two for Ter Stegen. Two for two. Two for Somebody two for said Ter Stegen. Thank award you. ceremonies were popularity save votes. Thing? Okay, yay or nay? It's a good save, but not as good yay as a listen save. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. going to listen no. for the best save there. Me too. All right.
Three against one. Ready Thomas, for the I'm next thinking. one, guys. Our next Seriously. award is for the best defender. You might not always like these players when they aren't on your team, but you worship the best and the most brutal of them when they are. The nominees for best defender are Gerard Pique, FC Barcelona, Sergio Ramos, Real Madrid, Diego Godin, Atletico Madrid, Giorgio Chiellini, Juventus. There we go. They are the picks for the best defender. What say you guys over this side of the table? We actually agreed on this, aren't we? PK, because I, you know, I think he's a, he's a wonderful leader of, of his team. Um, I mean, they finished 17 points ahead of, of Real Madrid, and I think it's I mean, 14 ahead of, of Atleti. So he's been well organised at the back. And you know what, Kay? The only match they lost in the league, he didn't start. He came off the bench. So I think he's a crucial player. What say pretty, you, coach? A pretty telling tale. Well, since you talked about stats and stuff like that, I'm going to talk about the new revolutionised inverted triangle defensively you got the triangle midfield of Busquets obviously Ter Stegen behind PK and 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 uh, Umtiti is now the guy that starts the attack so yeah he can make saves you but he can start the tiki taki from Barca as well triangle of the Bermuda <laughs> <laughs> it's in, it's in the Caribbean. this side uh, of the table one. they're going for an Italian defender I Giorgio think, Chiellini I think he's the last real defender in the world the striker is not supposed to score he stays on you the whole game Kicks the out of you, a beast. Uh, Chiellini, top, but as well, we've got to mention Sergio Ramos. I mean, yep. it, everything yep. that Bobo just said so eloquently about Chiellini, you could say it with Ramos with capital letters as well. Ramos is definitely the one that fits the mold of a player that you love to have on your team, but you hate him when he's not he's on your team. He's a villain and he's yep. a hero. At yeah. the same can can you imagine those two together as Son of Chiellini and Ramos, Ooh. you wouldn't want to play against them. Yeah, there'd be a few red cards there. <laughs> Shall we find out who the winner is? Come on, PK. Yeah, yeah, we got it. We got it. Give me a high five. Don't give me a high five. Guys, you've got to understand one thing. By the way, if, if hey, L voters are 90% four. of Barcelona fans, right. are going to vote on Barcelona four. players. Uh, well, come on, four. guys. Got I'm going to go and leave it. Here at Be Sports, we are proud to carry some of the best leagues on the planet, not to mention Commerball qualifiers and a whole host of CONCACAF qualifiers, too. Hours and hours of live action. But what's been the best match of the season? Let's take a little look. It was El Clasico. Barcelona 2, Real Madrid 2. Ray, you were on the call for this. It had it all. It was. It was a wonderful game. Um, more twists and turns than a drunk snake. And the, the, the absolute fabulous footballers. Cristiano turned this, the stale points on. Benzema had a hand. And then, of course, he's there at the end. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful finish by the one and only Cristiano. But the whole game played out with thrills and uh, great tension. There was just enough bottle edge in it. And uh, for me, it's always the greatest game on planet Earth. But this one was another rendition of just being the best. And we've got it on being sports every year. And I'm blessed to be able to call these games. I agree with you. I, I like the twist and turn. <laughs> snake. You know, it was amazing, Kay, and I've got to give Real Madrid credit here. Is they were only weeks away from the European Champions League final, weren't they? Yep. Like three, three weeks away. Yep. And yet, and they're one nil down. And yet they came, they came there and they battled and they fought for a draw. And that impressed me a hell of a lot. Yeah, but they weren't the ones that beat them. They weren't the ones. Nope. Yep, okay. We're steadily working our way up the pitch. When we return, we'll celebrate the men in the middle. Next up, we bring you the best midfielder of 17-18, as voted for by you. from SL Benfica and U.S. Men's National Team U20. I want to congratulate you on the fifth anniversary of the Locker Room Awards from my hometown, Philadelphia. Wish you guys the best. Welcome back to the Locker Room Awards, the best of the best of the season, as voted for by you, the viewers. We now focus on the magicians in the middle, the men who connect the attack and the defense and do everything in between. The nominees for best midfielder are... Sergio Busquets, FC Barcelona. James Rodriguez, Bayern Munich. Ivan Rakitic, FC Barcelona. Kevin De Bruyne, Manchester City. Now I think it's almost unanimous across the table as to who you guys have gone for as the best midfielder. Yeah, Kevin De Bruyne. I thought he was unbelievable at Manchester City first half of the season in particular. Eight goals from midfield is So is decent. Well, why only the first half? What about the second half? Because they'd won the league by then. They, won it, they got 100 points. He was linking up with Mane, with Sterling, with Silva. 
I thought he, and he scored some wonderful goals. So I was, I was very impressed with him. And just to compare with the others, I mean, Busquets and Rakitic, were you were that impressed with them? Well, yeah, Busquets is very, very, Bobo, not to me, uh, very, very good season, but not in the same, not in the same, uh, in the same category as De Bruyne. I agree. Yeah, yeah. De Bruyne was scintillating, and he was imperative to the team that played the best football throughout Europe. So, so I'm Bobo, here. I'm here. Yeah, you are on this program to talk yeah. about soccer. Right. Was it, was it? So the guy that should be there, I don't know why he's not there, and I think I'm going to go home now. No, no, no. <laughs> is Modric? Played the whole year, fantastic. Where is yeah. he? Okay, that fans have to board and everything. I agree with that. Where, where is the guy? He's not yeah, here. Yeah, I don't I see know, him. We could put a lot of other guys on there. I but don't you know see what? Our, a lot of other guys. Our, our, our okay, fans, Bobo, our fans are saying these are the four okay. guys you want to pick. So you know okay, what? I go with the new. I'm on a strike now. I'm the not new saying, I'm not picking <laughs> modern one. false ten. I'm well, not dynamic. No he can dribble. He can pass. He can shoot. I mean, this is yeah. you know the opposite of. The Rick Helmers that we love, yeah. the graceful. The this guy's an engine sure. in complaint. And he's got to do it in the World Cup. So let's just see if De Bruyne lives up Come on. to it. Okay, Let me go five let's out see of five. if he actually makes it as the Come winner on. here. Come on, King Rick. Yes! yes. 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 Shady yes. Woo. And it well is with 43% of the vote from you, the viewers, on this one. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Sure. Oh, yeah. Thumbs, I know he yeah. thinks it's yeah. okay. No, out of these four, <laughs> thumbs up, of course. Yeah. I'm not blind. All right. <laughs> Expressing oneself on the pitch is not all about fancy footwork. Being well coiffed is as much a part of many a player's uniform as their cleats, their shin pads, their shorts and their jerseys. Here's Adriana Matamoros to rate the top tresses this term. In the modern age of soccer, the biggest stars fear not being seen. Whether it's for exhibiting screamers, megs or serious hair game. Perfecting a do is like perfecting a move. Almost every week is a showcase of finesse. Take PSG's Neymar, whose skills on the pitch are not to be outdone by his shampoo swag. Blonde tips, punk mohawks, and curled locks have all made a 2018 appearance. Not even a spell on the sidelines stopped the Brazilian from unveiling fresh dreads. And his next cut is almost as anticipated as his World Cup showing. Big hair don't care Marcelo and daring Pogba join Neymar in the ranks. Even Nayangulan Cavani and Vidal have their own special ways with dominating dudes. But basking on the throne of luxury locks is the style king himself, reigning back-to-back -back winner of the Salon Dior, Cristiano Ronaldo. The Madridista has influenced the hair game since his 2003 Man U debut. Artistry, as impressive as a bicycle kick goal in the UCL quarterfinal. And well, that line is simply iconic. Oh yes, there's definitely a trend among these masters of football who write their own legacies. Soccer game peak, hair on fleek. Still to come, the breakthrough manager of the season and the campaign's biggest flops. This is B in Sports and you are watching the Locker Room Awards. back to the Locker Room Awards. I'm your host, Kay Murray, and you're our special guest this evening, and you definitely have the best seats in the house. But strutting their stuff here in the VIP lounge tonight are Tommy Rocker Rongan. Hey, <laughs> Rocker. Glamorous Gazza Bailey. Glamorous. The gorgeous Geordie Ray Hudson. Very nice. And the authentico bomber, Christian Vieri. Now, every season, the managerial merry-go-round continues turning and the sackings are steady through the course of the campaign, sometimes as early as September. But then there's the other side of the men in the dugout, the pretenders to the throne. The nominees for Breakthrough Coach are Eusebio De Francesco, AS Roma, Simone Inzaghi, Lazio, Pablo Machin, Girona, FC, Jose Bordalas, Getafe CF. Over on this side of the table, my man are going for Eusebio Di Francesco. Go on, oh, I think, you know, it, what he did at Sassuolo was, was good enough, uh, but now he's arrived at this team and done magnificently well. Uh, it, you know, that 3-0 that turnaround against uh, the, the engineer for Roma against uh, Barcelona was, was uh, astonishing. Um, first semi-finals in 34 years. But uh, it's not just this. It's the manner in which you see his team play. Uh, the, the, all the players play with such a smile on their face. There's a great organised aggression to them. This guy is destined for the stars. Listen, like you said, semi-finals. 
with Rome. Yep. Third in the league. It's not easy, you know, when you've got big teams that want to go in the Champions League. Playing is 4-3-3. Three, three. They have good players. And without Salah. Yeah, you remember? they sold him. So, they lost you know, him. So they have Salah. a lot of young players, and I think next year, even going to be better. Yeah. Talking about punching above their weight, what about Jose mm. Bordalas, Gary? Absolutely brilliant. I mean, as well as Di Francesco has done at Roma, they were second the previous season, third. I mean, it's, he's kept them up there, and he's gotten to a semi-final. I see that. But this guy, Bordalas... His team, Getafe, were in, this, uh, in the second division two seasons ago. He gets them up, and they were second bottom of the second division. He gets them up, and he gets them into eighth place. His budget is the lowest of everyone in La Liga. So he's got the 18th lowest budget, and he finishes in eighth place. That is absolutely yeah. brilliant. And when you can achieve so much on so little, I with, think that takes a super with, special with coach. With all due respect, yeah. guys, let's look at these pictures. You want to play for this guy, this Bordalas guy? Look, he looks like a, like a meat, mean? uh, meat cutter. I mean, I'm telling you, you how are you going for? I'm, I'm, going going for. I'm, going, I'm going for the guy that's supposed to be there. Hey, Thomas, Pablo Machine. Don't be looking in the mirror too quick, now. You know, I mean, you were a, you were a tremendous coach as well. You know, uh, you know, uh, still a judge of book by its cover. Come on. <laughs> Pablo Machine, next to Nagelsmann from Hoffenheim, is the most promising young coach. Gets Girona into the first division. Tenth place, Gary Bailey. His forwards come alive. And you know who I'm talking about. Stuani and also Porto. And his motivational speeches, everybody knows about. I love this guy. Sevilla, by the way, well done. He'll going to get you back into some European contention. Bordales. Let's nada, find out nada. who the winner is. Eusebio Di Francesco. Uh, who, can it, uh, who can it be? Yeah. Who can it be? I mean, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thumbs up, I think, yeah, overall. No, yeah. no, that's okay. a he's, a, he's a decent no. coach. He's a decent coach. Now, from decent. the top Magic. to the flops now. What? For every professional that impresses, there are always those that don't quite manage to live up to the lofty expectations placed on them. This is the award no one wants, but someone's got to get it. The nominees for flop of the season are Osmana Dembele, FC Barcelona, Pitolo, Atletico Madrid, Andres Silva, AC Milan, Alvaro Morata, Chelsea. Okay, I think that this was kind of unanimous across the panel here in that many of you went for Morata. Yeah, I think... Be going because they paid 60 million euro, you know, everyone thought that he was going to smash the Premier League. Right. Only scored, what, 11 goals? 14, I think, altogether. 11 or 14 altogether, something like that. We, we, we were waiting for a lot more goals. So that's the only... But it didn't quite wild. happen for him now. Not at all. Doesn't I mean, mean it's the end, Juve though. were oh. desperate to sign him as well, but um, his mental approach to the challenges of the hurly burly, slap bang, wallop glory of the APL, he just didn't fit. And uh, following Drogba and Diego Costa in, in that position for Chelsea, that was a big, big task. I hope he goes back to you. And yet it's, it's 60 million paid, go to, and 11 goals or 14 in total. Go to Andre Silva, 40 million paid. Two goals. Seriously? <laughs> He's got to be the flop of all time. 40 million, two goals. Milan finishing eventually but sixth. But two good goals, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Sure. You That's know it's a strike. Of the night. It's the number That's of it. goals. He, he deserves an award for oh, that, man. Man. Yeah. Well done, son. <laughs> what position you did you play, Christian? <laughs> That position. Yeah. Two, yeah. Goals. Yeah. two goals. You'd be happy with two goals <laughs> in the season. I want to go to the house. <laughs> exactly. You're about money, guys. And you pay 150 million for Dembele than all the 40 million of all the other guys is dwarf. Oh. And by the way, I don't ba blame Dembele. Dembele is not a Barca player. A, because he can't pass. And he's a $150 million guy. He gets, what, two or three goals? He does okay for friends. And, he an and maybe he follows Neymar because that's, that's what they wanted. That another Neymar that didn't get him. Oh. Dembele. Dembele. Uh, he's a good player, Come on, Dembele. Dembele. Okay, Come winner, on. 44% of the votes. You guys voted. Alvaro Morata. All right. But of course... Ray, you and I, we win because we, you know, we're talking about football here. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, we're talking about football. We're, we're not at the movies. We're you talking just about said, soccer here. You just said what the fans didn't know what they were talking about when they, when they voted me in. And now all of a sudden they're the greatest? No, no. <laughs> we're the greatest. Oh, Choosing the right players. Uh, not the fa we're the greatest. Okay. Like we, we look forward to Alvaro Morata returning to his best, though. Now, we hope this player and the rest of those shortlisted do get a chance to prove themselves again to rise like Phoenix from the Flames and perhaps earn themselves a spot on our Born Again on Being segment. The award for top Born Again on Being story goes to Bafatimi Gomez. 
In a born again on beaten class full of teams, players, and managers who won this season against all odds. Nobody did it quite like Galatasaray's Panther. In the hottest title race in Europe, Gomis led Galatasaray to their 21st Turkish Super League title. An absolute star week in and week out as they also took home the Turkish Super League top scorer crown with 29 goals to his name. And with the best celebration in all of world football, we can't say we ever got tired of watching Buffetimi Gomis. Our top 2017-18 born again on Being Star. Still to come, the best forwards and the best goal, the best of which live here on Being Sports. the locker room awards and it's a golden age for attacking players right now and what a season it's been for glorious goal scorers it's not always easy to narrow this list down but usually two spots are an absolute given the nominees for best forward of the season are Mohamed Salah Liverpool Cristiano Ronaldo Real Madrid Lionel Messi FC Barcelona and Chiro Immobile Lazio and once again, it's those two that are splitting the table here. Most of you have opted for Messi. Yep, I certainly have. Just looking at the others, Salah, yeah, fantastic season. Immobile, uh -oh. wonderful. Ronaldo, second half of the season only. First half was, was average. And yet Messi, every week, every game, phenomenal goals, phenomenal play, phenomenal assists. And Christian Berry just sits there and nods and goes, yep, and Messi he, he again. And he comes into this team as well, uh, uh, you know, uh, carrying the team. I mean, this wasn't a great year in terms of the aesthetic of Barcelona, so they needed Messi's goals. Argentina did as well. Yeah, the Pichichi winner, uh, the European Golden Boot winner. Um, and listen to this bubble. He hit the post 14 times. Wow. 14 times. Now, that's how close he came to extending that record, uh, the greatest. So Bobo agrees as well, but Thomas Rungan doesn't. Oh. It, I mean, if... And Bobo keeps saying that. The UCL was the most important thing, and I agree with you. He's in the UCL by far the most decisive player. And when it comes to big games, be it knockout, be it quarters, be it semis, he throttles Messi out of the way. It's unbelievable. If you look at that ratio there, big games, I step up. Here's the limelight. Zidane, I love you because you've done it and you share it with me. I'm going to do it as well. So Ronaldo, in my opinion, this year again with the title three in a row is the most prolific goal scorer in big games. But you know what? Unless any of you went on Twitter and cast your vote, it doesn't matter yeah. what any of you think because it's the viewers who voted. Okay. And they're they did so. Do we, have more, do we have more Barca fans or Real Madrid they're fans? They said the best Messi. forward with 46% of the votes. Yeah. 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 Got to be. <laughs> Salah, Kian and Christian. Yeah. No. Now, did any yeah. of these players feature in our best goal of the season shortlist? because that's what we've got coming up next. And somewhere in the world, we are still hearing the echoes of Ray Hudson's scream for many of these. Christian, Andrea Bellotti. This is the best goal of the year. So I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win this prize again. I've already won six, I'm gonna go seven prizes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Come on. Yeah. And he's a big guy too, so yeah. that's a good scissor kick. Yes. Fabulous. What, a, what about this, Kay? From the halfway line, from a defensive midfield, the scissor keeper off, look at this, it's perfection. Clips a crossbar on the way in. Come on, who's going to beat that for a goal from it's the like halfway line? Bailey, Come on. Uh, goal hey, steady, steady, <laughs> right? Yeah, take a look at this for class in a glass on the Levante grass. Gemma, look at this. Full-blooded volley with the accuracy oh. of Robin Hood. Uh, this is an astonishing wow. goal. This, the, this, this replay from behind the goal looks even better. Gemma, Levante. And we have another one in the running, and it's from you, Thomas Rungan, Malcolm from Bordeaux. Yeah, you said now. Malcolm, Malcolm, Malcolm. No, he's not Brazilian, he's French, he's dribbles, he's small, he's a winger. And he can strike a ball. Tottenham wants this kid because they want Harry Kane to be provided with some more service. Can play as a 7, can play as 11, or as a 10, because you know what? Boomba! He can strike from distance. Good stuff. I think he is Brazilian, though. Anyway, still to come on the locker room, the one we have all been waiting for. Well, who's the winner? Was there a winner? The winner of this best goal? Yes. Yeah. Is there a winner? Yeah. 
Favorite player of Benucci's son as well. Yep, still to come on the locker room. The MVP award. Who could it be? Hi, I'm Mark Silva, Everton manager, and I want to congratulate you on the fifth anniversary of the Looker Room Awards. Wish you all the best, guys. Oh, it's time for the big one, the 2018 Locker Room MVP of the season. The players who shone brighter than all the others and dazzled us with their skills and achievements. The final four, the creme de la creme of world football. The nominees for MVP of the season are Cristiano Ronaldo, Real Madrid, Mohamed Salah, Liverpool, Lionel Messi, FC Barcelona, Antoine Griezmann, Atletico Madrid. So guys, this is the big one, the one we've all been waiting for, the MVP of the season. You voted in droves for this one. Many of you think Lionel Messi might be the winner. And why would that be? Because oh, he's the best player in the world, I guess, and because they won the double. And I was playing around with the idea of Salah for a while. You said the most valuable player. He's the most valuable player for Liverpool. Without him, I don't think they go very far. But <laughs> if most valuable also means the best player, that's got to be Messi. Who else Mohammed can it be? was magic um, again. Um, but f it's a consistency over there. We'll see how Mohamed Sama does la next season. Mm. But we're judging it on this season, and Gary's right. For me, Messi dragged this team all the way. So Messi, top goal scorer, yep. right? Yep. Top in, assist man yep. in Europe. Yep. And top hit most post posts than yeah. anyone. Yeah. What are we talking about? Most posts? Yeah, 14 posts. Wow, that's not good. Then. You've got to put he him in a goal. He carried the team. <laughs> well, he did. He was a he, than, he, 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 did. he was a European top goal scorer and Spain's top goal scorer, Thomas. And so, 14 so, what are you posts. For? And 14 well, posts. And more and another. You go for another. Right? And he was brilliant to watch. Well, that's like that's me staying forget. in a bar till 3 a.m. And at the end of the day, I just kiss the girl. Come on, dude. <laughs> 14 <laughs> posts. What does that mean? Listen, you think it's easy? Just saying how close. No, on top of his attacks and goal, he did it all. Okay, let's talk a little he bit about... He carried the team, that's yeah. the thing. That's what, it was brilliant to watch, mm. let alone the mm. statistics, just to watch him. Mohamed Salah, how different oh. would that Champions League final have been had he stayed yeah. fit throughout the whole of it? Yeah, if, if, if that was... Yeah, if yeah. Andy had it, you yeah. know. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's, it's, it, that was a crazy game. It was, but you, he... You, you get Liverpool it, it, through no, 20 minutes, is great. You get eight shots, keeping, Salah. Bale's right. crazy goal, yeah. the goalkeeping, yeah. you're right. But he would have made a difference, yeah. Salah, there's no question. Yeah. I mean, mm. we're talking about him in the, in the same pantheon as Cristiano, Lionel, and Antoine Griezmann. Let's not discount him again. Uh, second place this year for Atletico, uh, had a great season. But Salah, I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if Salah eclipsed even Cristiano and Lionel. Uh, in, in fact, in that match, I thought Real Madrid first 20 or so minutes with Salah playing were a little bit worried about him. Oh, sure. He, he ran at them and they were getting bodies behind the ball. As, so, as soon as he went off, they, they had signed yeah. They had him locked down. They started bombing forward and then the match just changed. All the yeah, pressure went on to Liverpool. Let me, so I just wrote something down again, if you can see this, okay? This is Ronaldo. Uh, 93 bicycle goals. You get 14 posts for Messi. I got 93 in Ronaldo bicycle. Well, I, 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 didn't count yeah, you sure. I got one in last season. Attempts. No, that, that attempts. attempts. That's not goals. No, it's not. It's like when you get the FIFA ratings, I think. <laughs> that's that's say. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Technology. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, <laughs> if he's scoring 93 bicycle goals, I think yeah, then for sure he I should saw, be winning. I saw one you know? against Juventus. <laughs> I definitely that was saw brilliant. one this season. It might have played up for 93. He doesn't practice, by the way. Well, you know, he was off to a bad start as well this season with the injuries Cristiano, so mm. I I again, like he always does, came roaring back and carried his team all the way to the third Champions League. I mean, a I an I amazing agree. player. There's two levels iconic. here. There's the top level, and there's Ronaldo and Messi. Mm -hmm. yep. And then you've got a bunch of other guys. <laughs> yeah. One year, this one comes out, the year after, that one comes out. But wasn't out. it great yeah. to see Salah come out uh, with this sort of performance? No, and the way Cristiano carries Real Madrid much of the time, yeah. and Leo carries uh, Barcelona, 
Yeah, but Salah they've been doing did this it for, for as 10, well 12. with Liverpool. Yeah. No, I agree. For, for long yeah, the other two guys have been doing it for 10, 12 That's years, right. six, seven hundred goals. That's Salah, right. it's his first year yeah. that he's like at a top level. Sure. sure. Let's see in the next two, three, four yeah. years if he's sure. going to keep it. I would plus, still plus, keep plus the guys you're talking about, Messi, they won the double. Cristiano, they won European Champions League. Triples. Unfortunately for Salah, they finished, what, fourth in the league? They can Even still win the World well. Cup, though, Gary. Come on now. They can still win the World Cup. Oh, the World Cup. Yeah. Okay, as, could, then. as could Antoine Griezmann to Ooh, add to the Europa yes, League trophy good. that he won with Atleti this term. In another. Mm. Reports today, maybe he will stay at Atleti. No. Another inspirational uh, season for him. Uh, and I love the way he reacted to the crowd. You know, he, he didn't take uh, the GS. He stood up to them and uh, inspired them with... He's a fabulous footballer, and if he does go to Barcelona, I think the league will alter, and I hope he stays at Atletico. I would love to see him in the Blaugrana shirt in that team, but wow. he's an Atletico he man, we'll see. I wish that Simeone would move on as well, but he doesn't. And there's something with this club that, that people connect, you know, like Griezmann as well, because for the last three years he's gone, he's nuts, he eventually stays. There might be reasons for it, yeah. and, and, and that's amazing. By the way, it's Pride Month, uh, just to let you know. Oh, is that what that thing is on your... Okay, I was great. wondering. I was wondering. Just the colours. <laughs> Very he nice. He has 93 of them. Yours is looking well. pretty dapper today, though, Christian Vieri. Yeah. Yeah. I like this. Say, the, Thomas gave it to me. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Yeah. I, I just want to say, the moment this show uh, gets off the air, I'm taking this thing off because you know what they say about lads that wear bow ties. No. 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 God, what do they say? I don't cannot say it on say the air. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I'll tell you what I do want to know. I want to know who the yeah. winner was for this award. Roll, the isn't? MVP of Come the season. On. They were your four options. Go on, Messi. But only one could be the winner. And it Come was. On. Come on, Come on. Give me your seven in there. Whoa, whoa. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. That was okay, my Oscars pulled, moment. You were pulled <laughs> Whoa. Good luck, go on. It's all right. Yay. <laughs> 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 Very good. Okay, well recovered. Very nice, sir. Uh, uh, I think that was our percentages there. Uh, yes, yeah. it was. 45% wow. of you voted Lionel for Lionel Messi. Fantastic. That thumbs up, thumbs down. Oh, yeah, absolutely. How can you, can you not? You can't How can you not? Even Lionel from the Ronaldo Messi. fan, yeah. yeah. Winners yeah. there. Okay, we've got our best 11 of the season now. Every weekend on the Extra, we show you our best 11 of the weekend. But what's our best 11? of the season 17-18 here's a look at it well, starting with the goalkeeper it could be Oblak it could be Testagen but I don't think anyone's going to argue you'll have never man yeah well could be any of those you couldn't it so. talking about the Champions League <laughs> being the holy grail well, 22 goals conceded by Oblak best in by front far, of so. Atletico's defence yeah, Gary come on the fullbacks, we haven't even discussed them, have we? We didn't. Kate? We didn't get a segment for our fullbacks. Had we had one, because no one who likes would have been? Okay. Yeah. No you don't like Marcelo. Backs, no, I like, he's, he's the best left, he's left, left fullback yeah. in the world. <laughs> left winger. He's a left left winger, fullback yeah. winger yeah. does everything. Yeah. Midfield. I don't Hamas know. in there. But I don't know. I don't, what, people, when they watch football, do they put helmets on? So they don't see anything. What about Modric? Where's Modric here? <laughs> or even Rakitic in place of Hamas. Hamas would have never a great season, did he? I don't know, man. All right, I so let, gone let's Rakitic. hear I'm who shocked. you're upset yeah. didn't feature. Why are you so upset that Luka Modric wasn't in there? Because if you watch him play, he's the best player in mm -hmm. the world, in his position. Yeah. There's no player better than him. He makes Real Madrid fly. And Kroos, would you also include Kroos maybe as a... Not so much. I think so yeah, I think. Not no. so it's a bit slow, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, but uh, those three... Certainly Modric and Samira was yeah. tremendous. Those three midfielders... <sighs> I, I remember Christian's always said from the very beginning that Casemiro is just a great player for Real Madrid. We saw it number one. for Brazil yesterday <laughs> right. as well in the show. Uh, in the, in the, I have to say that game, you guys player. said, that, when was it, two years ago? Yeah. And I, I used to say, no, I don't like, but he's mm. fantastic. Yeah. So yeah. My bad. Yeah, but there you go. At least you admit when <laughs> you're wrong. Life. Anyone that you would have liked to have seen in there, Gary? Uh, maybe at right back, Carver Hall. I thought he had a decent season. Yeah, here, here. Carl Walker, oh, yeah. No. Yeah, you can't complain about Manchester City, but for me, Carver Hall, and of course, European Champions League final as well. So he'd be my bet and my place for right back. The front three, I think, are oh, pretty inarguable. Eh? I mean, try facing up wow. against that and defending them. Messi, uh, Cristiano and, and Salah. Um, the, the Hamas involvement was something, but uh, the only one that surprises me is, uh, and it's no surprise, all black, you know, De Gea, these players, uh, fabulous in between the sticks, but I would go with Kayla. Anyone for you, Thomas Rungan, that you would have liked to have yeah, seen there? Yeah, I'd there. If I go from a good-looking team, I'm going to Thielmans, Yuri Thielmans, good-looking guy. Good-looking. You know what I'm saying? Who Becker. 
Baker's a good looking. But who's looking for a good looking? Okay, so it's a good looking eleven now. Memo Choa. Yeah. Okay, I'm good. I can take a good looking eleven to the World Cup. Got a picky nose. So listen, while we are here, while we are here, we're going to be giving you nightly programming on the World Cup and on digital media. We'll be giving you reaction at half times to all the World Cup games as well. So let's get your picks, guys, right here, right now on the Locker Room Awards. Who's going to win the World Cup? Oh, oh man. It's a hard one to call. No, it's it? not, Gary. No, go on. Go ahead. Go on. Go on. Go say it. Italy. Go I'm not going to say it. Italy. Go ahead. I'm not going to say it. You're thinking uh, of you know, England. I'm, I'm going to write it down. No, I'm trending when I look at the Brazil, squad. Obviously. I'm trending towards France. I think they could really come together in, in a big, big way. But when you look at the class and the depth that Brazil have, I think there's going to be a South American team wins it. Mm. And my dark horse would be Uruguay. I don't think Argentina's got a chance. What about, what about Spain? What about all the talent they have in that side? You get Diego Costa up front getting a little bit nasty. Yeah, Ramos comes like back that. in the team. I think that's, uh, the, that's the weak link. You think so? I think nastiness sometimes helps you in a World Cup. Guys, Concede you nothing. always Guys, say that. Yeah. You're yeah. nasty. <laughs> Guys, if you can pick Germany... Come on, oh, Leroy Sané. Leroy Sané, by the way, was a Ouch. deemed good enough for the team. Right. So talking about talents. Bad yeah. coach. Oh, oh Jordi oh. Lowe won the last World Cup. It's still like Real Madrid. It's still Germany still lose because they won the last one in 2014. How many, how how many teams that ever win a World Cup? This Germany. will continue. Are you me? This <laughs> will continue. We will continue all summer with World Cup coverage. But we will thank you for watching the locker room with us all season, for voting for our locker room awards. We thank all our production team, our studio staff and our panelists here my first choice for christian vieri ray hudson thomas rongan and gary uh, bailey we'll see Woo. you next time i would make michael character captain of my good looking team